Stink ain't the mob. True sip. We in too deep. I am a mother of one. I, have, I was raised in Dalton. I graduated from Thornton Ridge. Um, I worked at Dalton Park, worked at Dalton Library. So I would say I'm a definite true citizen of Dalton and I'm a survivor. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was, she took me on her wing, it was like mentoring, it was like learning a different opportunity. Like I said, she, she put, she was trying to coach me to let me know that this is the game. Like that's, that's our favorite thing. This, this is the game. I'm, I'm teaching you the game. And I want you to be able to have opportunities that I had because I am the first black woman mayor of Dalton. And you can, you can be the one taking my seat. Like that was just one of those things that she always wanted. She always wanted to elevate herself and then elevate people under her, which was what she said that she wanted to do. Um, and, and upon meeting him and then being around him, I deemed him the Uncle Drew. Like, I gave him that name and it, it went all the way down to the mayor calling him Uncle Drew just regularly. That's just what, that was just his name because he made everyone feel comfortable. He's, I've even been in places by myself with him in cars, wherever, by myself plenty of times before ever anything. And he's never gave me an inkling of he'll harm me, he will make a pass at me. He's never done any of that. So yes, I deemed his Uncle Drew because now I feel like if I step out of here and how I know you that, that you fight for these other people, these other victims and all of that, you have my back. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm safe if I'm with you. And, and that was the relationship that he allowed me to, to take from him. Um, the other assistant, um, just, you know, being in our modes of being an assistant, we're saying stuff out loud, especially if the mayor is there, she's always doing something, so she wants to hear what we have while she's doing something or whatever. So now, this, that assistant, she'll always say, okay, well, we got this upcoming trip, and then she said the dates, and she said May 21st, and I was like, that's my 31st birthday. I've never been there. I didn't necessarily go know if I was going or not, but I definitely said, I want to make that trip. So. Um, Tiffany was, you know, telling me like, this is not, you know, no, no trip like that. Like this, we're going down there for business. And I said, well, I definitely understand, but I still never been in the vicinity of Vegas. So if I, even if I could just be there and it's my birthday, I, I would still feel good. But you know, I was like, you know how hard I work anyway. So I'm not even worried about that. And that was the conversation. This is our last night in Vegas. When we clock out, isn't anybody hitting the strip with me? You know, it's my birthday. And everybody said no, or they had something else to do but Andrew. Um, Miles did say that he, if he's done doing whatever he was doing, you know, he'll catch up with us. Okay, so fine, but I at least knew I got a man with me, I'm gonna make it home. I ain't even gotta worry about going, try to go on the strip by myself. I, I legitly thought that, you know, I was gonna make it home. Um, until my last memory was me waking up in his room. Why not now, right? And you'll hear so many stories of, oh, well, she waited 20 years and she waited 30 years. I knew if it was ever happened to me, absolutely not. That I knew justice needed to come immediately. And that's why. So it might seem like it's a now for you, but this has been a long journey for me already. And I've already p put my um, suffering aside, I put my de depression aside, I've worked on all that, I did my praying on if I should be sitting in front of you today saying my story, and I'm ready. That's why now, and I'm not just fighting for me no more. I realize that I'm fighting for every woman that's been in my position. I'm fighting for a sister that doesn't have a voice. I'm fighting for a sister that's scared. I'm fighting for a, for a sister who doesn't have a sister. I'm fighting, not just for me. I would like to say thank you, Officer Miles, for being my hero. You are the only person that stood up for me, opened your mouth, 
have the dignity to put everything that you had aside your whole life, your whole personal life for somebody that you didn't even know. You honor the badge that you vowed for. And I appreciate you for that. And I pray to God that you get infinite blessings because you deserve that. And I thank you so much for, for even being a human being. Not even just a police officer. You felt what was right. You felt what was wrong. And you stood on that. And you made it to the end to help me. And not only me. Now you're helping so many other people. So thank you. So much. So much. You know. A lot of people have been telling me they're so proud of me. And at first I never... I never understood what they could be proud of because I just felt like I was just doing what's right because it, it happened to me. But then coming out and, and um, the news putting out my report um, and hearing that it might be possibly other victims, that broke me even more. But it was like, that's why they proud of you. <laughs> because <laughs> you let the women feel like I can say something and somebody's going to stand with me because I was done wrong and I want to say to them I know it's hard I promise you I know it's hard, <laughs> but if nobody stands up for you, <laughs> you have to stand up for you. And I promise you, everybody else will fall in place. I promise you. <laughs> and we're not victims, okay? Because we are still here, all right? We are survivors. We are survivors, and we are surviving. <laughs> And we are going to live again. <laughs> We're going to have our lives back. But first you got to stand up, mama. And I'm right here. <laughs> I promise you. If any of y'all who's watching this <laughs> need me, I will be right there. No matter where you at. <laughs> and this is what I'm starting the foundation of. We're stronger together. Because we are. <laughs> And we are a community of women. And you know what? And I don't, don't want to even say women because it don't just happen to women. And you men, oh, y'all, the more people to hold it in. You don't have to. We're stronger together. And as and, and, and soon as everything gets solidified, I'm hoping that if you are a victim, please find your way to contact me or any of my people. And we're going to help you. Because you need a voice, and if you don't have your own voice, I will be.